bunch of great things exist but aren't currently getting distribution. A bunch of great things uh, need sales and selling. That's not me saying this. This is Peter Thiel saying this. Specifically, I want to say CS 183 lecture number nine. So everything needs sales and needs distribution. So what's going to happen? We, the people that are enrolled in CS 183S, we are going to do that. And that's what this lecture is. I'm going to talk about grab a pen, external API, hashtag external API. We're going to sell a bunch of things that we did not code. Brainstorming up and DJing up APIs. I've done a lot of the brainstorming for us where we're going to be selling things under the hashtag uh, and we can you can pick whatever one thing you want to do. You can pick all of them, you can pick none of them, you can just abstain. Uh, hashtag external API, the initials for application protocol interface, external API. It's not a phrase I just made up. This is a real thing where where just because there's an official API, there's also an unofficial API where if I buy a Twinkie and I deep fat fry it and then I sell it as a deep fat fried Twinkie, Hostess and the Hostess Baking Company does not need to give me specific approval. <laughs> Example, Uber. Uber used to not have an API and that's why I gave it an API. Meaning Uber Cab used to have a five digit short code. Old people would never want to text message a five digit short code. They want to call an 800 number in order to get a black car. That's how Uber started, just limos, just black cars. So I started to provide uh, Uber support via text message from my telephone, 415-720-8500 or 650-283-8008. There's B-O-O-B -O -O -B at the end, 8008. That interaction helped me do lead generation for Uber before their API. That's an external API. So the external API is that little sliver in the cross the chasm. It's that vertical that I've hashtagged out. It's a SQL app. It's literally DJing up two APIs together on that other side of the chasm. And that's where something's already gotten adoption. You're just helping it do distribution. And the reason that that's so significant is that countless companies have started up using external API, but the founders never actually iron out and hammer out the details for exactly how to execute this specific method. It's completely legal, just like deep fat frying a Twinkie or me providing tech support for a person who doesn't know where the app store is. This lecture specifically engineering uh, is just like engineering 145 lecture number nine where we sold Moneyball. And this is where Moneyball the book by Michael Lewis was coming out or was out and they're gonna make it into a movie. And so what we did inside of engineering 145 is we DJ'd the energy of an upcoming movie launch for Moneyball because VCs talked about Moneyball. We bought a handful of used books and we attached it to a movie launch and we debuted it on GigaOM. So we got a little bit of press and we did all these things without studio approval, without Michael Lewis approval, because we don't need that approval to buy books and then promote the film. That's what you're doing now. Is you are combining and you are crossing the chasm from the right. Now that's an explosion of jargon and what, let's make it, let's break it down and go super simple. You're DJing two songs and coming up with your slightly own new mixtape. That's what external API is, is a mixtape. Where using the Twinkie example, you're introducing the Twinkie to a big bowl of hot grease where you're frying it. Where previously nobody ever thought to deep fat fry a Twinkie and then sell it. So that's what you're doing with almost any app is you are applying it to a problem that they previously did not think to apply it to. I'm not the only person that does external API in how Duck9 started. Look no further than Tristan Walker, okay? Silicon Valley legend. Uh, I actually like him even though he went to the Stanford Business School. I'm kidding, I like everyone there. In fact, if you go there, I love you just because, well, you know why. 
Tristan Walker, bit.ly slash bit.ly slash twalker710. He did an external API to Foursquare by selling Foursquare for Foursquare before he joined Foursquare. Let me repeat that. He would sell something that he did not own by doing bizdev for Foursquare. Read that article. More external API awesome sauce. This is from another legend who hopefully you know about. If this is the first time you're hearing about it, seriously grab a pen. Ryan Graves. He's a friend and as is Tristan Walker. Ryan Graves also sold Foursquare without Foursquare's approval doing the external API maneuver. He bit.ly bit.ly slash rgraves710. The same thing that he did with Foursquare, I did with Uber, and then he became the first CEO at Uber, which I guess is doing pretty well, is if $2.7 billion worth of personal uh, worth for Ryan alone isn't great, I don't know what is. Now, for you, we don't really necessarily want to sell Foursquare, but you can sell a Hotel Tonight. It's an app, most people call for the SPG number, which is 888 uh, uh, four two five. Nine, you know what, when you're doing video or when you're lecturing, spelling is incredibly difficult. Uh, so is reciting phone numbers, which I'm normally great at. 888-425-9880, uh, I think that's, anyway. The old way is to call an 800 number. The new way is to use an app. And a lot of people don't use an app so well, therefore help people download Hotel Tonight. You know what's another great example since not 100% of people in America use Uber? Sell Uber. Sell using your phone number. I can't even make this statistic up. A lot of people who don't use Uber don't know where the freaking app store is. They think it's like at the corner of like Main Street and like Lombard. Venice. It's not. It's on your phone. They can't find it, so you text them the download link with your embedded code. Don't use my code, okay? That'll actually give me credits. You want to use your own code, so just sell Uber. Sell the Lux Valet. Uh, here's a code to write down. It's James20. If it sounds like I'm kind of salesy or getting excited, I love the concept of helping you, the undergrad engineer, sell something for the first time. And Lux Valet is kind of cool where it'll valet park your car. And there's a fictional story uh, on television called Betas and this kid named David Chu actually has a valet app that's just like Lux Valet and he says the most hilarious things like, that doesn't sound like a you problem, that sounds like a Chu problem or something like that. He says it way more funny. I'm having a hard time regurgitating it. Lead gen that. My goodness, this is like my favorite example in all the entire world of an external API. Lisa Falzone. Lisa, if you're watching this, who loves you? <laughs> Creepily, right? Uh, Lisa Falzone. She does not work at Apple. She sold a bunch of iPads. Granted, it's got software on there, but initially it didn't have software on there and they're just selling iPads to be cash registers, Revel Systems, bam, billion dollar company. Uh, it started off as a baby business and I wanna say her guest lecture was February 26, 2013, just off the top of my head. bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash, capital L, capital F as in uh, Frank Falzone, to be more irreverent, okay, sell the Fair Isaac proprietary algorithm for FICO scores. <laughs> you can't reverse engineer all of the scorecards, but you can definitely engineer how a scorecard starts off where a new person comes onto the grid, this makes me giggle, at a FICO score over 700. There's only one method, which is 24 on time payments. If you want to get to a FICO score, new score on the grid for an 18-year-old who's now 19 or a 17-year-old who wants to have a 750 FICO score, they're going to get it in 
24 on-time payments, which is two years of making on-time payments. You're welcome for that external API. You can brainstorm whatever API that you want to sell. You don't have to use one of the ones that me or my friend startup have. Uh, I don't financially benefit from you popping your cherry. Uh, I just get the shits and the giggles of you doing something great. And then maybe you'll tweet me a thank you. But you know what? If you're a dude, you're probably thankless and you'll just disavow any knowledge of me. Doesn't matter. Brainstorm whatever external API if you want to reach out to me, Larry at LarryChang.com, Larry at Duck9.com, or via text. Once you get comfortable with selling, selling's actually pretty fun, and selling lets you meet a lot of new people. I want to say 2006, Austin City Limits, uh, maybe 2007, I think it was 2005 even, I don't know, but there's a million, not a million, 600 photos uh, inside of my Facebook where me and two PayPal co-founders sell Yelp. And the reason we sell Yelp is a lot of women like new food and I really like women and we really like women. So we wanted to meet more women and women like new food and Yelp helps you discover new restaurants, foodies. It's like a treasure trove. So we would promote it and it helped Yelp, but it definitely helped us too. Okay, so when Peter Thiel needed a biz dev head, business development, AKA uh, forward uh, placed engineer, uh, forward deployed engineer, or a business salesperson, AKA business development, Peter Thiel, who also taught CS 183, he hired a University of Illinois engineer to be his head of business development. That engineer's name is Luke Nosick. And I guess this kind of comes full circle to what Peter said earlier in my tweet number one, which is that a lot of good things already exist out there that just need sales and distribution. And remember, before Elon uh, launched a rocket, landed vertically, he had to sell debit cards out of Omaha and yellow pages.